Hey guys, I'm Phoenix Gray, and welcome to Lit RPG Happy Hour, where I sample Lit RPG and alcoholic beverages. Feel free to drink along if you dare. Um, today I'll be reading a sample of Vamp Quest by Addison Rumberg, and I'll be playing a game called Character Shitfaced uh, along with it, where I will have to take a shot every time a character sheet comes up. Um, if you want to follow along, pause this video and download a copy of the book sample at the link, or you can just take a drink whenever I do. As a disclaimer, I do not read every book that I drink to. This is all for fun and to help spread the word about Lit RPG and these awesome books. Having said that, let's get started. So today I'm going to be drinking this super cheap bottle of uh, 151. When I went to the store, I was looking for Bacardi 151 and I went to two liquor stores and I could not find it. So I just grabbed the cheapest 151 I could find. Um, I will go ahead and pour a shot of this now to get started. I have an orange juice chaser. Uh, I watched my boyfriend take uh, like four shots of this the other night and he made it look horrible so I'm not expecting that I'm going to enjoy this. But we will... Uh... Actually I know I'm not going to enjoy this. I'm not even going to say we'll see because it's a lie. So let let's go ahead and get started. Chapter 1, Welcome to Vamp Quest. Player stats. This book actually starts with a character sheet. Level 1. Zero, uh, zero RM, health 10, speed 1, strength 1, sneak 1. Uh, RM appears to be currency, by the way. Inventory, 10 out of 200. Black tee, black pants, black boots, cape, plus 150 inventory space. Alright, so here is my first shot of death. I actually almost want to take a drink. I think I'm going to take a drink of this before I... Oh, it's so pulpy. Oh, I think I got pulp all over my lip ring. Okay. Oh god. Holy. Holy hell. Oh. Oh my god. I think the only thing worse than that would probably be taking a shot of Everclear, which I will eventually get to doing, but that's a that's going to be a ways off yet. So I know that there's a I know there's a something else coming up, so I'll go ahead and pour the next one. Oh my god. That made my insides very not happy. Oh, and I can still feel the pulp of that orange juice on my lips. Anyway. Welcome to the real life online, said a robotic voice. I glanced around, momentarily disoriented. What is this place? I appeared to be in a park, and everything was shaded black. The trees were tall and foreboding, silhouetted, silhouetted against the night sky. A full moon framed by clouds lit the world. I was wearing ridiculously tight black jeans, a black t-shirt, and a long cape, a long black cape that fluttered in the wind. Instantly I recognized this environment to be an advanced form of virtual reality and felt at home in the setting. This is a high-end game, I thought, and it soothed me. What is your name, player? The robotic voice asked. I thought for a moment. What was my name? I belatedly realized I had no recollection of my own past. I started listing names in my head. I wanted something to fit this creepy nighttime setting. My name is Blade, I said, confident I had chosen a perfect name. That name is taken. Try again, the voice said. Well, that sucks. Back to the drawing board. My name is Darkness, I said, a little hesitantly. That name is taken. Try again, the voice repeated. Acker? I asked, losing hope. Acker had a certain ring to it. I nodded to myself. On second thought, Darkness is kind of awkward, so I, I, I'm probably lucky it was taken already. Hello, Acker, the voice said pleasantly. I looked around again. The hair on the back of my neck stood up on end, and something felt off to me. Fear flooded my body as I sensed something approaching quickly. The wind howled through the nearby tree branches, only heightening the feeling that I needed to get away. I started running on a stone path through the park, each step echoing loudly. My outfit significantly slowed me down. My cape was like a parachute billowing behind me, and my black pants were too tight. I wanted to ditch my cape, but I had no time. I need to get to safety. I chanced to glance behind me and spotted a ghostly woman in a tight black leather bodysuit standing at my spawn point. Moonlight glinted off her long, sharp canine teeth as she smiled. Her hair was varying shades of red and orange. Shit, I'm gonna die on level one. I need to find a way to defeat her if she attacks me. Vampires are usually villains in video games, so she's probably my enemy. I turned to face her as she rushed towards me, silently gliding over the ground. She stopped a foot away from me and gave me a cruel smile. Ready to die, noob? She asked and started laughing. Although fear threatened to paralyze me, I forced myself to close the distance between us and took a hard swing at her. My fist flew past her head and connected with nothing but air. The vampire had dodged at the last second. I took another swing, attempting to punch her body this time, and again she dodged. She effortlessly, effortlessly, 
effortlessly caught my outstretched arm and threw me to the ground. Even while fighting, she never stopped her haunting laugh. A green health bar suddenly appeared at the top of my vision, and I watched in horror as a chunk of it flashed red and vanished. As the health gauge slowly disappeared, negative ten percent was displayed in a white font above the bar. What do you want from me? I cried. Although this was a game, I could feel real pain. My body trembled uncontrollably on the ground. Your blood, she hissed and wrapped a slender arm around me. I struggled to free myself, but I may as well have been pushing on a boulder. She was an order of magnitude stronger than I was. Help! I yelled, hoping a nearby player could save me. Shh, you'll draw on one at attention, she said. I felt a brief sting as she pierced my neck with her fangs. Struggling helplessly, I, I passed out as my health bar went below 10%. My eyes slowly opened. I was groggy and pain throbbed in my neck where I'd been bitten. A perfect circle had been drawn in chalk around me. Old concrete blocks comprised the walls and floors, while the ceiling had was made from drywall and covered in dust. Surrounding the circle were multiple men and women clad in black robes. They were chanting a low and repetitive tune. Four shadowy figures stood in the corners of the room. They were each holding jet black guitars, strumming rhythmic power chords. The electrified sound of their playing sent shivers down my spine and gave me a sense of true terror. All right, I want to quit, I shouted. Game off. Quit, but you've only just begun, the vampire from earlier said, although I was unable to see her. She dropped down in front of me suddenly. I hope you aren't this whiny when you're one of us. She bit her wrist, and blood started spilling from her veins. Where each drop of black blood hit the ground, it started to sizzle. She shoved her wrist into my mouth and held me in place. I tried to spit, tried not to swallow, but the black blood soon flowed down my throat. It felt like I had just drank a mouthful of straight whiskey. My eyes watered, my insides felt like they were being torn apart. I started coughing and knew I'd soon throw up. Welcome to my team, Acker. Someone get him to the bathroom, the vampire said casually. I don't want to see what happens next. One of the hooded figures ushered me up creaky wooden stairs and into a tiny and disgusting bathroom. Had anyone ever cleaned in here? I became violently ill, throwing up what felt like my internal organs and not just the contents of my stomach. I'm definitely dying. I flushed the toilet nonstop for five minutes straight, and then finally there was a reprieve from the gushing pain. Congratulations and welcome to Vamp Quest Level 1. You have successfully changed races from human to vampire. Close your eyes to view your stats. See your team leader, Veruca, for your next mission, the robotic voice said. I closed my eyes and I could see my stats as well as my inventory. Oh, it's another character sheet. Health 10, Speed 5, Strength 5, Sneak 5, Blood Bonus 5, Bite 5, Mesmerize 1, Regeneration 1, Sun Resistance negative 50, Night Vision 50, Special Vampire Moves, None, Inventory 10 of 200, Black Tee, Black Pants, Black Boots, Cape, plus 150 Inventory Space. Alright, time for me to take another shot of death, because this tastes like, like it might kill me. Anyway, here we go. Let's try not to drink my hair. It burns going all the way down. If you've never taken a shot of 151, you don't want to. Anyway, uh, it was a lot to take in, but I tried not to think about my stats. Oh, God. Okay, sorry. That's, it takes a moment to get over it. Maybe more than a moment. It's pretty bad. Oh, it hurts. Okay. I had more pressing issues to take care of. I cleaned myself up as best I could at the tiny, filthy sink. I still felt gross, but I exited the bathroom to look for the vampire who had turned me. I was in, a, in an abandoned cathedral. The wooden pews were in various states of decomposition. A hole in the roof lit in a cold breeze, and the light of the moon shone faintly through huge stained glass windows that must have been at least 30 feet tall. The hooded figures and guitar players were nowhere to be found. Hello? Anybody here? I called out as I wandered around. I headed toward the door. This place is giving me the creeps. As I put my hand on the doorknob, I heard a familiar, sultry voice. Where do you think you are going? The slender yet powerful vampire asked seductively. I want to get out of here. This place is creepy, I said plainly. Also, do you have a mission for me? Maybe you can give me a clue what's going on here since I'm on your team? Darling, patience. Have a little fun. This is a game, after all, she said. Half the fun is learning how to play. Okay, what's the purpose of this game? Can you at least tell me that? And who are you? I asked. I need some answers. I'm Veruca in game, she said, then asked, you don't remember buying this game or logging in? No, I can't remember anything about myself or why I would be playing this game, I said, dismayed. Interesting. I guess that explains why you're so uptight, she said while coming closer, like a shark circling its soon-to-be prey. Although she was gorgeous, she was downright scary. I could tell she loved this game, or at least the person she got to be here. 
I'm glad I spotted you, Spawn. Since this is, I'm glad I spotted you, Spawn. Since this is the only life you know, you should be an excellent player. Her eyes revealed lighthearted curiosity. I guess so, I said sadly. I certainly don't want to die. Oh, sweetheart, you're already dead. Furthermore, you're a fully-fledged member of the Vamp Gods now. That's the name of my guild, Baruka said and winked at me, which only accentuated her extraordinarily long lashes. Although she was physically attractive beyond belief, I couldn't help the sinking feeling in my stomach any time I glanced at her teeth. The teeth that had just incapacitated me so effortlessly. Well, I don't want to die again, I said. We'll only die from sunlight, silver bullets, and decapitation, she said, then nonchalantly added. There might be other ways to kill us, but we're impervious to more mundane deaths. A huge plus we vampires get is that instead of waiting for a generation to heal us, we can just drink human blood to regain health. That was the reason I ran to you when you, when you spawned. My health was a little too close to 0% for my liking. I could have just left you for dead, but I saw your cute brown hair and crazy getup. I just had to have you around. So what's my first mission? I asked, wanting to get on with it and to get out of this awkward situation. I want to start leveling up so I don't get killed by the first person I meet. Or I guess the second person, seeing as you, the first person I met, promptly killed me. You can start with something easy. Go drink the human's blood. Do it without drawing attention to yourself and the authorities, she said with a twinkle in her eye. I'm going to climb my tower and watch your progress. This should be entertaining. She took off out the door faster than I could protest. The abandoned church was surrounded by a large, empty parking lot, and I went out into the night to find someone who had let me drink their blood. I looked up and saw Veruca standing like a statue at the top of a clock tower, which stood higher than anything else around. I could see a few shops about two blocks away and started walking toward them. I noticed my feet and legs moved with ease, so I started running. Now this is what I'm talking about. I was easily twice as fast as I'd been when I was a human, even in this dramatic attire. Soon I heard voices chatting loudly and took a quick turn into an alleyway. I was shrouded in shadows, but I held my breath anyway. After a moment, I found I didn't need to breathe. I held my breath for a full minute, although I noticed I could barely move my limbs at that point. Apparently, they still needed oxygen to function properly. I began breathing normally again out of habit. This is the best, getting drunk, but like never getting a hangover, an inebriated woman said. I know, totally worth the $3,000, best VR world I've ever joined. I'm only logging out if my mom forces me to, a loud man slurred. I waited, carefully contemplating the information I just overheard. These people are just players. I guess I am too, but they're humans and I'm a vampire. Should I feel bad for drinking their blood? I'll wait until I, I find a loner and try to convince them to let me drink their blood. It is just a mission after all. Minutes went by as I stood motionless in the night, blending with the shadows due to my dark outfit. Finally, I saw a woman exiting the bar alone. She had ash brown hair and light blue eyes. Her face was sweet and innocent. She seemed like the kind of person I, can open, I could open up to, the kind of person who would understand my predicament. I approached her cautiously. Um, hello, miss, I said nervously. She turned and met my gaze happily. Listen, I know this is going to sound weird, but do you mind if I drink your blood? Yes, absolutely I mind. What's wrong with you? She asked, looking offended as she sharply pivoted on her heel and started walking away. I darted around to stand in her path. I'm trying to be polite. I'm a vampire and I need to drink her blood so I can level up. Please, I promise I won't hurt you, I said, trying my best to persuade her and feeling horribly, judging by the look on her face. I don't know what game you think this is, but you're not getting a single drop of my blood. I paid good money to play, so I'm not letting you kill me now, she said stiffly. I was about to try persuading her again when she pursed her lips and eyed me with interest. Nice outfit, by the way. How much did you pay for it? Wait. Please? I asked. I hate these clothes. I just started out wearing these. I hoped I hadn't paid real money for what I was wearing. It was practically a costume. I'd be much happier in a suit and tie, or even better, a comfortable t-shirt and some blue jeans. Definitely no cape. I can take you to get a new outfit if I can have the garments you're wearing now, but as far as the whole blood thing goes, it's still a no from me, bro, she said sternly. I guess it's fine with me, I said, happy to finally be doing something I actually wanted to do. Can't wait to get some normal clothes. You really don't remember how much you paid? She asked quizzically. I saw an outfit like that go for 3,000 RM. I know I would remember spending that much money. My past life seems to escape my memory, I said glumly. You must be rich. Sounds like you're used to amnesia. It sounds like they used amnesia trip on you. It allows for most lifelike gameplay to date. It allows for the most lifelike gameplay to date. It totally blocks out any personal memories so you can be fully immersed in the game world. Consider yourself lucky. Follow me. 
she said pleasantly and started walking down the street. We walked for a few minutes down the dark, well-traveled road and passed by a few more nightclubs. Bat swooped in front of street lamps. The woman then pointed to a building with futuristic neon lights. Right in there, she said. We entered and were met by a seven-foot-tall man who dressed as a fancy butler. How can I help you, he said, Star staring at both staring at us both through his monocle as he cleaned a dirty spot in a shirt with white rag. We need to get him some new clothes, and I want his old clothes, she said, smiling at the butler. What is his IGN, the butler said. Maria 4744, she said. The butler then turned to me expectantly. Acker, I said. Transferring clothing, the butler stated without a care. In the blink of an eye, Maria was wearing all my clothing, while I was left in nothing but black boxer briefs. The tight attire looked much better on her than it did on me. I owe you one, Maria said, beaming at herself in the mirror before turning to me. What style of clothes do you want? Oh, you're kind of cute. She looked me up and down and then winked at me. This fit jeans, a plain white t-shirt, and some sneakers, I said. Part of my mission was to keep a low profile, but I stuck out like a sore thumb in my old garb. At least I'd done a good job designing my avatar, since every person I met so far seemed impressed by me. I do well to remember this was all just a game, but if Maria was right and I paid an exorbitant amount for an amnesia trip like she'd said, I felt like I should fully immerse myself. Can you give us some help with that, Maria said to the butler. He nodded and hastily made his way to the back of the store. A moment later, he returned with my requested items. I put them on awkwardly in front of the two of them. The butler gazed at me steadily with no sign of emotion. Once I was fully clothed, I started to feel a bit better and possibly a bit more like my true self. Thanks, I said gratefully. Look yourself in the mirror. Make sure you like how it fits, Mira said, taking me by the shoulder and guiding me in front of a nearby mirror. Mirror. Oh my god, I'm slurring already. I'm so sorry, guys. I am a lightweight. You should probably know that I honestly do not drink outside of the recording, so I like, I'm like. i super affected by alcohol. Anyway, uh, Maria looked like a goth rock star she posed, but somehow managed to still look kind. I appeared to be non-existent. Whoa, where are you? Maria asked and started waving her arms and hitting me. She watched, she watched in the mirror as her hand seemed to strike only air. Even my clothes weren't visible in the mirror. No way, you really are a vampire. They must have added vampires to the last patch, she said, sounding stunned. Then she turned to the butler and said, Put his clothes on my tab. Weird, I said in awe. I started to wave at the reflective surface. My motions were completely invisible in the mirror's portrayal of the world. I was having a great time shopping with Maria. It felt like we understood each other. Hmm, so maybe you do need to treat my blood, she said, regarding me thoughtfully. You can swing by my place if you want to. I'd love to, I said, excited to possibly get a chance to gain a level. I might be making a friend. It'll be nice to just relax and have fun with another player. My house is quite close to this, to this shop, just a few blocks away, she said nod to the butler, and then started heading out of the shop. I followed close behind her. We were over to her house only a few minutes later. His modest home with one room and one bathroom. The bed sat right behind the couch in the middle of the living room. I know it's not much, but I tend but I tend to spend my in-game currency on outfits instead of upgrading this place. I only come here to sleep and change clothes. Check out my closet. She pointed to a small door a few feet away. I opened the door, curious to see what would be inside. The church backed over twenty feet and was filled with a wild assortment of clothing. I was amazed. There was no way the closet should have fit in the house. The home hardly looked bigger than a shed from the outside. Yet the closet was even bigger than the living space. They give infinite closet space with any house purchase, she explained. Probably to keep people buying the latest fashions. I love having all the new styles, she paused. So will it hurt when you drink my blood? I hope not. It hurt when I was bitten, but I think that was mainly because the vampire who turned me is kind of a psychopath. I think she enjoys messing with me, I said. I actually don't know what Haruka really wants from me. Okay, well, get on with it. She tilted her head to one side and brushed her hair out of the way. I approached her and gently pressed my fangs into her skin. I felt warm liquid fill my mouth, but it tasted amazing in a weird way, and my body thrummed with power. Euphoria filled my mind and each of my limbs. A message popped up that read, Blood bonus activated, plus 5% to all stats 
for the next 10 minutes. Congratulations, your bite ability just reached 6. Bite two more players to raise it again. Mission complete. You have reached level 2. Choose which attribute you would like to level up. The message faded and was replaced by one that read, Complete two more missions to reach the next level. Get your next mission from your team leader. I was overwhelmed with messages, but felt great. <coughs> Maria looked a little pale, but was otherwise okay. She walked to her bathroom, then returned a moment later with a small bandage on her neck. That wasn't so bad, she said and yawned. I'm glad I really didn't want to hurt you, I said sincerely. She nodded and plopped down on her sofa. Sweet, let's see what I can do now, I said and closed my eyes. A few of my attributes filled my mind. I added a point strength, raising it to six. I felt my body become slightly harder and my muscles grew a fraction of a centimeter. Huh? Maria asked, looking at me like I was a madman. Oh, I just leveled it up, so I added a point of strength, I said, pleased with my progress. I should try to find my team later to get my next mission, though. I started to make my way toward the door. What are you up to now? I need some sleep. Your little neck bite brought my health to 75%, so I'm going to recover before clubbing again. If you purge too much, you can't easily regain the health, she explained. Unless, of course, you've spent time leveling up your regeneration ability. What happens if your health falls to zero, I asked. Not only is it extremely painful, but you're also kicked from the game until you pay the, in the entry fee again. For me, it was 3000 to enter. Some people pay more, some people pay less. They give deals to people who have a large social media following. Many people make a living off streaming their game lives. But I'm just here to unwind and be more social. Eventually, I want to be a clothing designer in some way designs both in-game and in the real world, Maria said, then moved to lie down in her bed. Jump by whenever you need a fresh blood supply. Maybe we can do some event gaming together and get some sweet prizes. Thank you so much, I said appreciatively. I can't wait until our next hangout session. I'm glad we met, she said and smiled sweetly. I'll try to stop by soon, I said, then opened the door and stepped out into the night. I sprinted back to the abandoned church. I could see the clock tower from far away, so it was a good landmark. I could use it as a reference point while exploring this new world. I wonder if there's a map feature of this game. I arrived at the decrepit cathedral to find Veruca and a few of the rogue people in the parking lot. Veruca was holding a rocket launcher and pointing at pointing at an old car. The observers were enthusiastically cheering her on. She fired a rocket and a momentary hush fell over the onlookers. BOOM! The car exploded into an enormous fireball. The crowd erupted into a round of applause and excitement. The smoldering fire, was wa the smoldering fire warmed my skin, although the blast had been deafening. Veruca did a victorious dance and approached her cautiously, and I approached her cautiously. I thought you were going to watch me on my mission, I stated, a little uncomfortable. The car, only a few yards away, now destroyed and still burned, served as a reminder that although Veruca was as gorgeous as a movie star, she was absolutely deadly. I did for a couple of seconds. You're boring, love. Oh. I need excitement. Still, nice job to level 2 without dying. Ready for your next mission? But first, someone get him some clothes fit for a vampire, Brook said while adjusting some knobs on the rocket launcher. The rogue followers ran to the house and emerged a few moments later with black jeans and another cape, black t-shirt and combat boots. I bet this dude is pissed. This is not in the manuscript, but this is just what he got rid of and he got more of it. Uh, I grudgingly put on the dark clothing. These new clothes were nearly the same as my old clothes, except it looked like they'd been extensive, uh, extensively by someone before me. They'd been used extensively by someone before me. Of course, he's going to be mad. He was trying to get out of these clothes. We're vampires, Acura. We have to dress like it. It's part of the fun. The outfit you choose to wear at the beginning of the game was the outfit you chose to wear at the beginning of the game was perfect. What happened to that? You have to make do with this old gear I used to wear before I updated my wardrobe. She said and took the normal clothes I'd been so generously gifted. Before I could even think to protest, she tossed them onto the burning car. So much for that, I thought and shook my head. I want to get a special vampire move. When does that happen? Also, what would I be able to do with a special vampire move? I asked, not daring to tell Baruka I'd given away my apparently trendy and spendy clothes. Baruka smiled and her bright red lips moved over so slightly. Poof! Her scarlet hair and vampire avatar was gone, and all that remained was a fluttering light brown myotis bat. Sorry about that. It swooped around my face. I recoiled, slightly disgusted by the creature. The bat flew high into the sky and was completely out of sight after a few seconds. Then a moment later, it was hurling straight toward the ground. 
Just as the vet stripped the pavement, smoke engulfed the small creature, and Burkery appeared. She winked at me. I felt my dormant heart begin to beat furiously. My amazing transformation there was just a taste of what's possible with special vampire moves. You unlocked your first one at level 5. Don't get ahead of yourself, Acker. You still have to master the basic game mechanics, Burke said. But I'll give you a mission that will help you with this. Go compete at the Minotoka Fight Night. Win and bring me the proceeds. I'll give you something sweet in return. I have no fighting experience, at least none that I can remember. Also, I have no idea what Minotoka Fight Night is, I said, feeling overwhelmed. Oh, right. I should have given you more of a tutorial, but I'm enjoying watching you founder. Say, map on, darling. Then ask the map to take you to your destination. You can zoom in or out by saying zoom in or zoom out. You control the map like that. It's pretty versatile and handles many other co commands similarly, Brooke said, finally giving me some much needed help. Map on, I said. Instantly a map of my world popped up. We appeared to be in mid-sized si in we appeared to be in a mid-sized city named Orono. Map, take me to Minotoka Fight Night. A route was displayed immediately. Over two hours to walk there. It says two hours. Do you have any form of transportation to get me there? To help get me there? Wine, wine, wine. Is that all you do, Acker? You can run. You'll get there more quickly than you expect. It will help you build character, literally. It's about 10 miles from here to there. Once you run 10 miles in game, you raise your speed stat. That counts as a mission. So you should be level 3 once you bring me your winnings. Baruki gave my arm a light punch. Get moving, Acker, you little noob. I shrugged off her hand and started on my route. I ran as fast as my buddy my body would allow. Why did I say buddy? I have no idea. I noticed the map was directing me down the main roads, but I could switch my path to one away from the hustle and bustle of the city, close to an expanse of lake. I might as well enjoy this if I'm going to be running for a while. I switched to the more scenic path. The new route took me close to Lake Minnetonka, and I was able to run along the sandy tree-lined shore. It was gorgeous and spooky. The moon reflected off the black surface of the lake, and there wasn't a soul around. The only thing that disturbed the silence was the soft, was the soft lap of water and my feet pitter-pattering down the road. My vampire brain was hyper-aware. Hyper-aware. I could see approaching obstacles from far away and easily dodge them. Soon my path left the beautiful ghostly shoreline and brought me back to the city. Here there were a few cars, but I stayed on the road, easily weaving in and out of traffic as a motorcycle would. There were many business sh businesses, shops, and the nightclubs. This seems like the place to be. It would be easy to spend hours in the game's thriving nightfall nightlife. Congratulations, you've run 10 miles and received a free point into your speed stat. Earn your next speed stat upgrade when you run 20 more miles. This counts as a mission. Complete one more mission to get to level 3. Keep it up, message read. Map off, I said as I came to a stop outside of my destination. I closed my eyes and confirmed my speed stat had increased to 6. Two huge bruisers stood outside guarding the build guarding the doors of Minnetonka Fight Night. They looked tough, but I squared my shoulders and approached them. Hey, I'm here to compete. Alright, let's get you signed up, the larger of the two bouncers said. Step in here. I stepped into something that looked like a high-tech telephone booth. A bright light flashed without warning, causing my eyes to blur and water profusely. My name, weight, height, BMI, and stats were displayed on the screen. Then it added me to the noob tournament bracket. I was taller than ninety percent of my competitors. What do I get if I win this? I asked. You're not going to win this, kid. The small of the two doormen stated flatly. The large one grinned and said, "I like the way you think, Chief. Winner gets ten thousand in real money. You can okay. So that's what arm stands for, by the way. You can warm up or grab a drink just down the hall. Fighters drink for free. The announcer will call you five minutes before your fight. I walked slowly down the hall, careful not to bump into anyone." The narrow space was lined with strong looking people, huddled in groups, giving each other pep talks, while others sat stone faced on the ground. Could I really compete with these hulks? Hopefully, I would catch on fast. I reached the end of the hall, and to my left was the competitive arena. To my right was, was back alley. I headed in back alley where a long bar stretched across one end of a huge gym. Rows and rows of workout benches, squat machines, and treadmills were in this large workout facility slash bar. I stuck out like a sore thumb in my tight vampiric attire and emo hairstyling. I was also pale as a ghost compared to everyone here. The patrons of Back Alley looked like they'd just been through an intense spray tanning session. I made my way to the bar and ordered a vodka red bowl from the butler who'd apparently been programmed to act like a surly bartender. I needed to get amped up for the upcoming fight. Quit staring, kid, the bald butler said as he made my drink, his biceps bulging as he moved my cup with ease. 
I averted my eyes while I waited. I noticed a friendly looking man with a huge beer belly sitting next to me. You fighting tonight? I asked the man. You betcha! I'm trying to compete until I have enough real money to convert to USD to buy a car in the real world. I'm halfway to my goal. Then I'm getting out of this rat race. Competing in these fights sure is more fun than my real job. But if I were to die in game and lose it all, that would be the end of me. I look forward to when I can spend my in-game time doing leisurely activities rather than fighting for my life, the man said, then burped loudly. Alright guys, this is the end of my sample. Um, honestly, because I'm an edgelord and I love vampires, I'm probably going to buy this book. I, I think it's it's well written and I've never seen a book, uh, a vampire book in lit RPG before. So I'm actually kind of really excited about reading this. So uh, anyway, again, this was Vamp Quest by Addison Runberg. If you enjoyed this read, uh, I have a link to the book in, uh, in this post. So uh, go ahead and buy it if you enjoyed anyway, it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a good day, a good night, a good week, a good weekend. Whatever time it is that you're watching this, and I will talk to you later.